One of the best shields you can get early in Enshrouded is the Pike Meads Bulwark. Now it has slightly more durability than the other shields you can get at this level, but the best part about it that makes it so good is the plus 25 points of health it gives your character. It also looks amazing and has this cool light feature. That and how easy it is to get, because you can technically get it without killing anyone and just run past all the enemies in the dungeon it's hidden in. Let me show you how. So you can get this shield at the start of the game, starting from Longkeep, you're going to come directly north over Branley Bridge, which is the broken bridge you see at the start, and we're going to come over here up the Ancient Spire which is the Springfield fast travel point. Now, once you reach the top of this location, you'll have a big fast travel point from which you can glide to pretty much most areas in the game. And this is our starting point. We want to be gliding around northeast direction. So we're essentially going from here all the way over here to Mistberry Catacombs. I'm going to go ahead and drink a flask of the fell before we leave. And I'm also going to eat some food so we've got that ticking over with some extra health. And then we're just going to jump up here so we've got like a little bit more altitude. And then we're going to jump over here and just glide as far as we can in the northeast direction. And you see that sort of outcrop of mountain? We're basically going to land on top of that and that's going to be our break point. And then from there, we will go to the catacombs and raid the queen's tomb essentially for her unique shield oh my god okay don't know why the game did that thank god we still made it even though we dived downwards okay so we need to grab this which is um the flame shrine orb and then what we're going to do is just wait for our stamina to regenerate quickly and right, now it's regenerated we can go ahead and glide northeast I would highly recommend, by the way, you get a double jump because it's just such a good perk. So there you go. We've pretty much made it through the shroud there. And now we just need to climb this hill. And again, carry on going northeast. We want to go just to the left of the bandit scavengers camp, which is a great place to get scrap metal if you need it. But uh, we definitely don't. We've got plenty of that. Let's go ahead and drink some water. So we just flew all the way from the ancient spire to the Hill of Scavengers. And now we're going to work our way around this mountain on our left until we get to the Mistbury Catacombs entrance. So carry on going around the hill and you'll eventually come to this big outcrop which represents the entrance to this tomb. And there's actually a checkpoint right outside here which you'll respawn at if you die. And it's a difficult dungeon. You can run past the enemies inside it, though. It will require a lockpick to actually open, but we've brought an axe, um, and this is a much better way of just smashing open the door. Doesn't require any lockpicks. There we go. So, if you look into the distance there, you can see the entrance to the tomb itself, which has four locked buttons that we need to activate. So the first button is going to be on the left here. Ow, someone's already shot me with an arrow. It's a bit rude. And we're going to find another locked door, which we can obviously get our axe and chop through. There we go. Now we can run straight on and up the stairs. And again, you can just ignore the enemies in here. And we're going to jump over here to the right, like so. And if we come around this corner, we'll be able to climb up the scaffolding here. And then we want to get our sword out, actually. Now, if you look up, you'll see there's a repel line, which you need the grapple to use. I have a guide on how to get the grapple linked below. And then if you get your bow out, you can actually shoot those explosive barrels, which will hopefully kill the enemy over there who's nearby. Now, the first button is just here. So you're going to go and press that. It's quite hard to see when it's in the light, though. <laughs> kind of blends in with the scenery. So now let's go and loot this guy for those uh, shroud spores. And we can also open this coffin for some healing and flint arrows. And now while you're over here, you might as well get your axe out again and just smash down this door. And just to the left, you'll find another chest, which you can loot for some random loot. Now the loot is leveled. So obviously in these higher level areas, it's going to be better than the lower level areas. We'll destroy this to get rid of it for the shroud. And then we can just run through. And now we're going to glide her down here, back down to the bottom. And we're going to do the same again down here. And now we basically just retrace our footsteps 
um, back up the stairs to the start of the dungeon. So we're back at the start of the dungeon here, if you guys recognize it. And now I'm going to show you the second button to activate. So I've got my bow out, and I'm just going to glide down to the right-hand side here. Oof, that was a lot of full damage. And just down there, you can see the button. I'm just going to go ahead and activate it by firing a bow at it. Make sure you jump over the red lava. And now we're going to run back up to the entrance here. And then right again up these stairs back to the entrance once again. So I'm just using this as a reference point for you guys. And now we've done two out of four buttons, we need to do the third button. So now we're going to go right. And if you like, you can sneak up to these guys and take them out. Uh, where is he? There he is. Oh, he spotted me. I would recommend parrying them. Like so. It's just so much faster because otherwise they're pretty good at blocking your attacks and it will take ages to kill them. So now what you want to do is use this wooden bridge, look up, and you'll see a grapple. So you have to jump to, in order to reach it and then jump again to get over. There's another chest right here. Lots more spells in there. And now if you look behind you again... You see, just on the other side there, we can shoot that button. And now we've activated the third button there. Now, there's a few ways you can go from here. You can actually go upstairs. And there's a better vantage point to destroy the button with. But if we run back down the stairs here and go right this time, you actually see there's a secret treasure chest hidden in the darkness with a health potion. Might come in handy later. So now, we can just jump back down here. And once again, we're at the star. And now we need to activate the fourth button. And this is the hardest one to activate. So now we're going to go forward. Um, just straight on, basically. You can see three of the buttons are active currently. Bit of a visual bug there. But we're going to go right. And we're going to go down the stairs. Get your axe out. There we go. So we've broken that down. And now you want to get your sword out. Because there's going to be a bunch of bugs that come out of this. So just block them. And then go ahead and destroy them all. One of them stuck in the wall there, but you should be able to hit him through the wall. So now we need to get down our axe and just chop this thing down. There's another enemy there though, so let's make sure we're ready for him. Uh, you can collect the, the critter parts here, and they can be broken down using the, um, the grinder um, for different potions that you can craft. Another treasure chest on the side here. There's also a secret way up there. I don't actually know how you get up there. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments. But if we turn around again, this is where I died because I'm an idiot. But uh, we're going to grab that. And now we basically want to jump and climb on here. Now, if you fall, there's like red floor underneath you. And that's what killed me because I got enshrouded. But we basically want to wait for our stamina to regen. And then just walk up to the wall and just start climbing over. Sometimes I tried to like jump and land on the grid and it didn't like make my character catch it. So that's why I died basically. Now just here you'll see there's an explosive. Go ahead and blow that up. There's an enemy behind it. It's going to come around and try and kill me. So you see I'm going to stun him there. Like so. So I can loot him. And there's a little secret area behind here. Retrace your steps. Go back downstairs. There's another secret chest here. If you grapple over here. And there's actually, it's actually worth picking up this one. Ooh, a wolf snarl longbow. It's a pretty good longbow, actually. And then you can use your grappling hook like this to get back. God forbid you try and jump and end up in the red stuff and die like I did last time. And then we just come back round. And here's the enemy. There's a couple of them here. One literally just ran through the wall. Let's use merciless attack on him. Take this guy out. Oh, didn't know he was power attacking there. All right, there we go. I, I can parry everything in the game, but these guys, when they have those weird wind-ups to their attack, they're really annoying. Look. Anyway, this is the button we need to press. That's the final button. So now we've actually opened the way into the minds of Moria. And it's also opened this shortcut door behind us. There's an archer up there still. Okay, so now we go back into the central area. And you can see, at the end, all four lights are on. Kind of. There, there there you go. It's a bit of a visual bug, but the door's now open. And we can now claim our reward in this awesome-looking boss dungeon. Here it is, inside. Pike Mead's Bulwark. 
Quest completed. Even in death, the queen unites those who seek protection behind her shield. The best part is the plus 25 health. And as you guys can see, this shield just looks awesome. I mean, I love the appearance of it. It even has like a slight light on the front. The light doesn't actually seem to light anything up, but it looks cool. If you guys want to find more unique weapons like this one, make sure you check out this guide over here and I'll see you in the next video.